Let's talk about linguistic parameters and their relationship to something we may be more familiar with, which is statistical parameters. So a parameter is meant to be something that can account for multiple observations in some domain, right? So a parameter for a statistical model determines what the model predicts will be observed in the world in a variety of situations. And so the parameter for our mental and linguistic model determines what we predict will be observed in the world in a variety of language situations, right? So to make this a little more concrete, um, let's walk through an example of the normal distribution, which is a model that uses two statistical parameters, mu for the mean, and sigma for the standard deviation. This is grabbed right from Wikipedia, so we have a variety of different normal bell curves, right, depending on what our values of mu and sigma are. And so if we know the values of these parameters, then we can make predictions about the probability of data that we haven't seen before, or that we rarely see, right? So let's say, focus on, on think about this concretely as a model of how many minutes late that I'll be to class, right? And so let's use the model where mu equals zero and sigma squared is 0.2. So we have this blue curve right here. And you can see what, you know, sort of it's most likely is up here and like least likely is out here, right? And so how probable is it given this model with these parameters that I'll be five minutes late to class? And the answer, if you look at that blue curve, is really not very probable. And that's because of the values that determine the actual shape of this bell curve, right? Nothing, zero probability out here, right? What about right on time? What about a zero minutes late? And the answer is, well, that's super likely, right? Because of what my parameters have told me about what to expect, right? What about two minutes early? Well, again, actually not not super likely, not very probable, because that's not what my parameters lead me to predict. So we know this, we know all of these predictions, we have all these predictions just by knowing the values of these two statistical parameters, mean and sigma. And these parameter values allow us to infer the probability of observable behavior, whether we've seen it or not, right? So let's shift as to another example of this model right here, the green curve, which seems to have a lot of its probability mass concentrated on the, I'll be two minutes early sort of thing down here. And so how probable is it that I'll be five minutes late given these parameter values? And the answer is not very likely, right? Not very probable. Uh, what about right on time? Actually also not that probable, right? Pretty low probability here. What about two minutes early? Ah, that's where we see a spike, right? Much more probable that I will be two minutes early given these parameter values. So changing the parameter values clearly changes the behavior that we predict we'll observe. So therefore observing, how do we infer these parameter values? Well, we basically do that on the observable data that we encounter. So if we observe different quantities of data with particular values, that can tell us which values, in this case of mu and sigma squared, are most likely if we know we're trying to determine those values in this function. Right? So if we've observed data points distributed like this, well, that tells us that the green curve values are probably most likely. So mu is likely to be around negative 2, and sigma squared is likely to be around 0.5, right? Because those are the values that best fit the observable data I've seen. So important similarity to linguistic parameters is this. We don't see the process that generates those data. We don't see this function in action, right? We just see the results of it. This means that in order to form our expectations about the behavior that we want to observe here minutes late that I'll be to class, we have to basically reverse engineer the observable data to decode what the most likely parameter values are to actually be, right? So our knowledge is of the underlying function or principle, this stuff up here, is important. We need that, as well as what the associated parameters are and how they figure in to that description, that principle. And once we have that, well, that allows us to represent an infinite number of expectations about the behavior of this thing in question that we're interested in, even though they're all constrained to basically, in this case, be the same shape, right? You can still have an infinite number of bell curves of different shapes, as we see four examples here, based on these parameter values. And so that's really the analogy to linguistic parameters. So both linguistic principles, which we'll sometimes uh, hear about, and linguistic parameters are thought of as innate domain-specific, that is language-specific, specific for the cognitive domain of language. So innate and language-specific abstractions that connect to many different structural properties 
about language. And so the principles correspond to the properties that are invariant, the skeleton, if you will, that does not change, that determines the shape of all human languages, right? This is the equations form. It's this principle that explains the observed data, how the shape that it will always have. And the parameters correspond to the properties that vary, that determine the exact implementation of that shape across human languages. So here that would be for mean and sigma squared, determine the exact form of the bell curve, right? So while different values for these parameters can produce many different curves, these curves share their underlying form due to that common invariant principle, that common invariant function, right? And it's the parameters that determine how that specific shape gets played out in any particular human language.